Marami ho nagtatanong kung bakit kailangan pa ng House of Representatives na mag-imbestiga ng PhilHealth, gayon man na ando na ang Senado at ando na ang DOJ na lagi imbestiga ng mga problema ng PhilHealth. Ngayon, ang humaharap po sa inyo ngayon ay dalawang komite. Ang komite on public accounts na ang tinitingin niya po ang pananalapi ng ating bayan at ang mga pananalapi, pananalapi na kinakailangan bantayan sapagat ito po ay nanggagaling sa taong bayan. At ang pangalawa pong komite na humahinaharap niyo ngayon ay ang Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability na siya rin uh, House Blue Ribbon Committee. May investigasyon na nga ang DOJ, maaari pong mag-investiga rin ang ombudsman, maaari pong ituloy-tuloy ng COA ang kanyang pag-audit, ngunit mahalaga sa process po ng uh, paggawa ng batas, uh, pag tayo po ay gumagawa ng batas, ay ang investigasyon po ay mahalaga. Dalawa po ang sangay ng ating legislative department. Meron po tayong Senado at meron po tayong House of Representatives. At ang perspective po na nanggagaling sa Senado ay kakaiba sa perspective na nanggagaling sa House of Representatives. At alam natin, sa, na sa bicameral legislature, kinakailangan po magkasundo pareho ang House at Senate para magkaroon ng batas na kalalabasan ang kahit na anong investigasyon. Kaya hindi po ito superfluity, hindi po ito sobra-sobra ng nagpapatong-patong na investigasyon sapagat iba-ibang perspektibo po nang gagaling ang mga tanong namin. Ang abiso lang namin sa aming mga miyembro ay panoorin din po ang Senate hearings at panoorin at uh, alamin din ang ginagawa ng DOJ para alam natin ang lahat ng kinikilos ng lahat ng ahensya nang maging kompleto ang pagtingin sa lahat na mga bagay-bagay na maaring sumambulat sa lahat ng mga investigasyon. Kaya kung tatanungin po kung bakit sabay-sabay nag-iimbestiga ang ibang, ibang sangay ng gobyerno, marahil ang pinakamagandang sagot dito, ang bawat Pilipino ay miyembro ng PhilHealth. At dapat lang na ang lahat na maaari magbantay sa kabanambayan ay magbantay na at magtanong ng mga kinakailangan itanong upang Matapos ang mga alinlangan natin sa ating field health kasi marami hong lumabas na hindi ka nais-nais na balita na ngayon dapat po magkaroon tayo ng closure at uh, magkaroon po tayo ng solusyon para sa kinabukasan ng field health at sa kinabukasan ng ating health policy sa Republika ng Pilipinas. Yun po ang dahilan kung bakit ang iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno ay maaari pong mag-imbestiga nang hindi naman nagpapatong pa kahit na sinasabi nagpapatong patong ay iba iba ang pinanggagalingan namin lahat. Nais ko lang po linawin muna yung isang bagay na bumabagabag sa akin. Andito ho si Nerisa Santiago, Senior Vice President. Kayo po ay naglabas ng uh, ng isang statement na sabi niyo ang actuarial life ng field health ay maari isang taon na lang lamang. May di ba hong pakilinaw ito at ipaliwanag sa amin? kung bakit nyo po nasabi ito sapagkat ito po ay nakakagambala at maaari pong uh, matapos po ang usapin na, na ito bago tayo magsimula. Go ahead. Feel as recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, um, uh, Mr. Um, House Speaker and uh, the rest of the honorable members of the House. Um, regarding po dun sa one year na lang po, at actually it's based on assumptions po projections. That means uh, uh, tinitingnan po natin kung ano po yung probable na papasok na pera at ilalabas natin na pera. So, for this year, we have an actual uh, uh, figures as of June na mapagbabasyan po natin ng actual na pumasok na pera although yung benefits hindi pa rin po actual kasi we have given uh, the hospitals 120 days to submit their claims instead of the usual 60 days po. So kung halimbawa po na hospital lang Marso, uh, mabibigay pa po yan uh, uh, four months after. Meron po silang four months to submit yung claims. Kaya po hindi po ganun kadami yung aming basis for the benefit payouts. 
So, yun po, uh, bali yung uh, projection po na one year is yung papasok po na pera, uh, so yun po yung collection na manggagaling sa indirect, which is the subsidy coming from the government for the premiums of the indirect contributors, and yun pong sa direct contributors na collection na manggagaling po sa kanila. So, dalawa po yung panggagalingan natin. Um, so, for 2020 po, um, na kita po namin na for um, April, May, June, bumaba po ang ating collection because of the slowdown of the economy. So, yun po yung pinagbasihan natin for the rest of the year, average po nung, um, nung marireceive natin. So, uh, for the direct muna po, uh, we expect na yun sa government, we will still get what, uh, as an employer, we will still get yung ano kasi hindi naman po sila kumbaga ang gobyerno naman po tuloy-tuloy po po yung bayad so on the on the employed uh, private uh, employed sector ito po yung merong mga nagsara may mga na lay off may mga na retrench at hindi na makatrabaho so yun po yung dahilan kung bakit bababa yung po sa in, sa informal naman po ito naman po yung individually paying so uh, Kung makakabayad po sila, magbabayad sila. So, kung wala po silang trabaho, hindi po sila magbabayad. So, um, basically, yung pong pasok ng pera, bumaba po for 2020. And for the uh, benefit payout naman po, yung paglabas ng pera for 2020, because of the COVID uh, pandemic, we expect a higher benefit payout. Kasama po dito yung COVID inpatient at saka COVID testing. So, Dahil po, dalawa po yung side na naapektuhan, bumaba ang collection at tumaas ang, ang, um, ang uh, benefit payout for 2020, uh, kakain po to sa reserve fund. Ibig As sabihin, think, may so? deficit po tayo between benefits and collection. Mas okay. mataas po yung benefit payouts natin kesa sa collection. As for, think, so? uh, Honorable Rimunya, I'm if uh, you recall, dun sa pag-usap natin, kung papayag po kayo, uh, we go to the all case rate uh, ah, okay. and then we proceed to IRM and then ito pong finance that you are asking now. Ano, itutuloy ko sa case rate to pagkatapos. That's the next question ko sa case rate na po. Okay. Uh, okay. Just just so the the members are uh, clarified, uh, Honorable Limulia, after you, uh, the Honorable Sarate, Barbers, uh, Marcoleta and Kimbo will be uh, doing their interpolation. Go ahead, continue. Tuloy niyo po yung sagot niyo. Tapos, pa. ano? Uh, pagdating po sa 2021, uh, dahil po meron po tayong recession in 2020, na expect po natin na even in 2021, bababa po yung ating collection. So, may expect po kami. Ang nasyon po namin doon is uh, a decrease of to about 25% in the direct... Uh, 25 percent decrease in terms of direct contributors pagdating po sa indirect uh, we have proposed to the to dbm uh, na 138 po sana 138 billion ang i allot sa amin sa gaa for 2021 uh, kaya lang po na we got advice na they will only give us 71 billion na pareho po siya nitong 2020 so, in that aspect po, mababa po yung makukuha natin na collection in 2021. So, Ms. Santiago, you're, you're a practicing act, act, actuary? Apo. So, you're a math major? Ma yes. Ma math tulaga ang... Rin. Yes po. So, pagdating po dito, so let's go to the case rates, no, Mr. Chairman. So, if I may begin. Um, how many cases does... Feel health recognize all case rates. Uh, anybody, Mr. Pargas. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Congressman. Yes, sir. We have around more than 4,000 cases for the medical uh, illnesses and for the surgical uh, procedures. We have more than 4,000 uh, case rates also, sir. Uh, you mean uh, 4,000 types of case rates? Yes, sir. Uh, ano ho ang pinakamaraming case rate na binabayaran ng all case rate na binabayaran ng PhilHealth sa ngayon? Uh, give me the top five or top six case rates, all case rates that PhilHealth has paid. 
Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may, point of order. Uh, did we, yes, go ahead. Um, I move that we uh, take the oath of all the uh, resource uh, speakers uh, for today's uh, hearing. Thank you for that, uh, Honorable Fernandez. Uh, with the indulgence of our guests, those who are here and those in Zoom, uh, may we request you to uh, take your oath before you, uh, before we continue with our interpolation. The Committee Secretary is directed, uh, the Honorable uh, Comsec Marivic, uh, kindly swear in our guest. So ordered. Please stand and raise your hand, right hand. This also applied to those uh, resource person part participating via Zoom. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this hearing? So help you, God. Thank you. Maraming po salamat. Honorable Limulia, can you continue? The reply on the question of the Honorable Limulia. Yes, ano yung anim na pinakamatataas na binab... Ano yung anim pito na? Pinakamatataas na binabayaran ng Fair Health sa all case rate and corresponding amount for the year 2018 para may sample lang ho tayo sa isang taon. Um... Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, sir, the data I have here is for 2019. If it's, oh, sige, 2019. Oh. Uh, for the medical case rates by claims count po, the uh, number one is community-acquired pneumonia. Number two is dengue. Number three is, uh, this is the dengue uh, hemorrhagic fever with warning signs. The number three is UTI. The number four is acute gastroenteritis. The number five is still dengue without the warning signs. This is the dengue one. Then we have the bacterial sepsis of the newborn unspecified. Uh, then number seven is bronchial asthma in acute exacerbation. Number eight is hypertension, stage two. Number one is essential hypertension, and the last is acute gastroenteritis. For the procedures, by claims count, it is hemodialysis. Number two is uh, uh, obstetric care, this is the normal spontaneous delivery, the newborn care package, then the expanded newborn care package, we have the routine obstetric, which is in the non-hospital facility, cesarean uh, delivery primary, the vaginal delivery with uh, episiotomy, then the chemotherapy, cesarean, and then the cataract as number 10. For the amount, sir, um, for 2019, For 2019, the uh, dialysis procedure is around 10 billion. The uh, uh, obstetric normal spontaneous delivery in hospitals is 2.4 billion. The newborn care package is around 722 million. The expanded newborn is at 1.1 uh, 1 billion. Those in the maternity care package at 2.3, this is in the non-hospital facility. Cesarean for primary is 3.5, uh, vaginal delivery only at 1.3, then chemo at 943, cesarean delivery at 2.2, and uh, um, uh, for the cataract removal, it's 1.6 billion. For Dr. pneumonia... Pargas, taka, sandali, sandali, Dr. Pargas, sa lahat ng ito, nagwi-withhold ba ang fair health ng... ng Taxes para sa mga doctor's fees? Ang ating pong withholding tax ay uh, nakacharge po sa hospitals at ang sa professionals, professional fee naman po, ang mga hospitals po ang nag uh, de ng withholding tax. Because the case rate as it is, it is uh, provided and paid to the hospital as a whole package po. It is the hospital who brings or who gives the payment to the professionals. So, pagdating po sa sabihin natin, no? uh, pneumonia, maraming klaseng pneumonia po, di ba? May moderate, mayroong mild, tsaka mayroong severe. Tama ba yun? Yes po. Uh, ang, ang inyong mild pneumonia, 44,000 ang package. Uh, Mr. President, ay Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, ayun uh, pong sa mild, moderate, and pneumonia, uh, mild, moderate, severe, and critical, is for the COVID packages. But prior to the COVID, we have two for the pneumonia. The pneumonia for moderate risk and the pneumonia for the severe. The mild pneumonia as considered 
prior to the COVID is not being paid as an inpatient. Rather, it is part of our primary care benefit package. So, so magkano yun? Magkano ang all case rate nyo sa mild pneumonia? 44,000? Well, uh, for be, before the COVID po, wala po tayong case rate for the mild pneumonia. It is being paid or part of the primary care benefit Dr. or the Vargas, you have two. The acquired pneumonia, which is 15,000, at saka yung uh, severe, severe pneumonia, which is 32,000. Yes, that is prior to COVID po. Nung lumabas po yung COVID, uh, because the main uh, condition then being attributed to the COVID as part of the presentation is the pneumonia. So yun pong naging package for the COVID with mild pneumonia po is at 43,000. Yun naman pong uh, for the moderate is at 130 plus thousand. Yun pong for the severe, it's at around 300 plus. And yun pong sa uh, critical is around 700 plus thousand. How did you arrive at these amounts, Dr. Fargas? Uh, po, Dr. Fargas. Uh, when the uh, pneumonia, uh, when the COVID started, uh, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Congressman, Chairman. when the uh, pneumonia, when the COVID started po, uh, there were no uh, uh, standard, there were no clinical guidelines then because the, the guidelines po are developing and every day the signs and symptoms are uh, changing. So what we did po, to come up with the uh, packages for the COVID uh, pneumonia is we ask from one, the data from the itemized billing charges from the hospitals who already had pneumonia cases then because we don't have any uh, experience on the COVID. Then we had uh, based our management or treatment guidelines with those which are being uh, uh, established by the PISMID or the Philippine Society of uh, Microbiology and Infectious Diseases and all the protocols that are coming out with the DOH. So technically the input po for the prices or the costs uh, as we costed it are coming from the itemized billing charges of the hospital. So ano yung ano? I-itemize nyo nga sa amin kung paano nyo, paano dumating ang 44,000? What, paano ho dumating sa 44,000 yan? Magkano ang, pro, ang fees? Magkano po ang gamot? Magkano po ang kwarto? Magkano po ang, ano po yung ano, breakdown yan, 44,000? Honorable Limulia, while the PhilHealth is preparing the presentation on how they arrive, kung paano nila nakuha yung bawat presyo dito sa COVID, uh, meron sana akong presentation on the ECR. Maring kung, pero madami-dami siyang slides, pero these are all official slides. Na ma, if you want, I'll present it and then... Uh, Let's finish this question, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Vargas. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Uh, Congressman, yes, sir. Uh, we had a third party, uh, the Palladium of the USAID, who actually helped us with the coming out of the uh, packages. This would include, again, the uh, accommodation, the drugs and medicines, the supplies, the PPEs, and the diagnostics, which are then... Uh, costed and uh, the amounts or almost the median range of these uh, uh, cases uh, came out as as the package for the same rate by yan, Dr. Pargas same rate by yan sa public hospital as a yes. private hospital yes uh, Mr. President uh, Mr. Congressman yes po uh, we have the same amount for public uh, and of course the go private hospitals yes sir so, um, so, so so all case rate Mr. Pargas Ilang percent ang binabayad ng PhilHealth comparatively sa private sector, sa public hospitals, at ilang percent ang binabayad sa private hospitals? Uh -huh. Anybody from PhilHealth, baka may sagot na kayong ready dyan. Ilang percent nagpupunta sa private hospital, ilang percent nagpupunta sa public hospital? Mr. Chair, Go ahead. Uh, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, based on the 2019 data, we paid 58% of the total uh, claims payment to private and 42% to government. That is uh, all case rates, lahat lahat yan. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. 
58 to 42 ang lumalabas na ratio. So, mas maraming private kayong binabayaran kaysa sa public. Ang COVID testing is in the all case rating yan, di ba? COVID testing. Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Congressman, yes po. We pay po case-based payments also in uh, COVID. Magkano ho ang testing ng COVID sa all case rate ng, um, ng ano, PhilHealth? Mr. President, Mr. Congressman, the uh, uh, testing package po natin for uh, all services is at 3,409. For if the kits are actually... Uh, Donated. If the testing kits are donated, we pay 2,077. And if all the services, including the kits, are actually provided uh, or included already in the budget of the facility, we are paying around 900 pesos only. Pero yun binago nyo yan. Ano ang initial na inalaw na fair health para sa cost ng COVID testing? Yes, po. The initial uh, case rate or case uh, packages for the uh, testing. For all services being provided, it's at 8,150. Uh, for the uh, donated kits, it's at 5,000 plus. But for the, uh, if again, the, the, the third case, which is the donated and all the services are included in the budget, it is around 2,000 plus, sir. So, nagbago yung rate? Yes, sir. Bakit nagbago yung rate? Ano nagyari at binago nyo yung rate? Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Congressman, Please address yes? Mr. Chairman na lang. Okay. Mr. Chairman, lang, kasi Mr. President is for the oh, Senate. No? Sir. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman. Yes, sir. Uh, when we did the initial uh, uh, costing uh, for the packages of the testing kit, again, together with a third party, uh, we only had very limited sources of data then, especially uh, konting konti pa lang po yung merong uh, accredited facility at the same time. Uh, konting konti pa rin lang po yung merong mga uh, uh, testing kits available then. Oh, then, then. Mr. Pargas, how long, ilan ang binayaran nyo ng 8,000 pesos para sa COVID testing? And uh, kanino nyo binayad yung 8,000 pesos na yun? Uh, Mr. Ch President, uh, Mr. Chair, for a while. Go ahead. Kailan nagsimula itong nagpagbabago ng rates? Magkano ang binayad nyo sa 8,000 pesos sa isang COVID test? I'd like to recognize the arrival of the President of the NUP, the Honorable P.D. Barsaga, who's here with us. Uh, for the COVID, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Congressman, for the COVID-19 testing kits, uh, before the June 25, uh, the total number of claims that we have is at around 12,000, and the total paid claims is around 2,181, uh, and we paid around 9,863,000. For the COVID testing naman po, after the June 25, we have a total number of 38 claims so far, and still it is not paid and still unprocessed. That is as of July 31. Mr. Pargas, meron ba kayong ano, time limit sa COVID test? Uh, kasi ang, ang COVID test is only really good for two days. On the third day, wala na siyang silbe kasi wala yung, wala yung information, di ba? Information is the key to COVID, di ba? How long, meron ba kayong timetable? na dapat ilabas ang test within a certain period of time para ito ay bayaran ng PhilHealth? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Congressman, wala po kaming, uh, with regard to those uh, protocols and guidelines, it is under the DOH po. Uh, our uh, our uh, particular function with regard to the testing is actually po the reimbursement for the for the Pero, di ba, you can also put in your own policy 
as to the effect, efficacy of any procedure. Meron kayong mga iba-ibang departments, di ba? Napaka-top heavy nga ng field health eh. Pag sinabi niya, di ba, kung alam niyo, ama ba, sabihin natin, yung isang, isang COVID test, 15 days walang resulta. Lumabas ang resulta on the 16th day. Ito ba, babayaran niyo pa rin ang full ito? Yes, Mr. Chair, because the, the currently what we follow as a guideline, kung sino po yung babayada namin, is the department order, uh, the department memorandum of the DOH of who, was, who are going to be uh, uh, tested. Pero with regard po to the protocol on kung kailan lalabas yung mga resulta, kung gaano po kabilis yung resulta, uh, hindi po kami ang nag-regulate on that. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm asking that question because it's useless for field health to be paying for tests where the result comes out very late in the day because these tests have no more value. Nobody is supposed to be reimbursed for a, some, for a service that never really helped the person. Eh, sa ganitong, ano, sa ganitong usapin, eh, para naman na nakaka... Parang hindi na ho na bayad tayo ng bayad, kahit na hindi na ho, paso na yung test, kung tutuusin eh. Dalawang linggo bago lumabas. Di ba ho, parang wala naman hong visa na yun, Mr. Chairman.